Euphoria, a sensational new HBO show about young people that focuses on addiction and drugs and mental health. Is it glamorizing drugs or is it a realistic portrayal through the lens of media that will always have a sort of an element of glamour? I mean, look at my hat. Let's find out. Hello there, you 300,000 awakening souls. Thank you for joining me on Awakening, my side channel, where we look at things from a more spiritual and perhaps optimistic perspective. On my main channel, I analyze news and culture. Here, we look at news, culture, and techniques for awakening. There's loads of videos of great teachers and speakers and thinkers. Have a look at some of the playlists on the channel. Today, though, we're talking about euphoria. Is it glamorizing drugs? What do you think? Or is it a kind of a helpful portrayal? Those of you that don't know, and that includes me because I'm in my 40s, Euphoria is an American teen drama series. It follows a group of high school students through their experiences of identity, trauma, drugs, friendships, love and sex. But the Drug Abuse Resistance Education Program is calling out the series for its depiction of drug use, sex and violence. The Drug Abuse Resistance Education Program said in a statement, HBO's television drama Euphoria chooses to misguidedly glorify and erroneously depict high school student drug use, addiction, anonymous sex, violence and other destructive behaviours as common and widespread in today's society. Really, who's causing these problems? Television show makers or a culture that promotes drugs that they know are addictive, doesn't deal with inequality, doesn't deal with a mental health pandemic. Mark Fisher, the brilliant philosopher, pointed out that mental health and addiction should be looked at as social and cultural issues rather than individual issues. Like, oh no, what's causing like this spate of addiction issues? Oh well, it's because of these social and economic conditions. Let's have a look at the trailer and try to use your critical eye to understand whether or not this is uh, what the function of this piece of filmmaking is. This is not easy, but I'm very proud of each and every one of you for trying to take this on because it's no future in addiction. Well, firstly, I'm impressed that anyone can pull one of those suitcases on a bicycle, so I'm hooked. <laughs> Marshall McLuhan, of course, says the medium is the message. He was a sort of a cultural analyst and philosopher. And like the very fact that it's on TV sort of gives it a degree of glamour. Now you'll notice, of course, that these people are very good looking. Again, because that tends to be the way that that medium operates. And God, I was a drug addict, obviously. Like, you know, and like, I thought it was pretty cool that people like Jim... Jim Morrison and Jimi Hendrix and like, you know, Kurt Cobain, like what well, drug addicts, of course, those people are all dead now um, as a result of drugs or sort of conditions related to drug and alcohol misuse. So there is a complexity to that. What is it that we, when we find addiction glamorous, what is it? Is it that it's like something that outsiders do? Is it that it's like a countercultural? Is it that it's criminal? Is it that drug addiction is an attempt to dismantle the default conditioning that you receive from your culture and that can biochemically be achieved by living in a sort of a oddly zoological penitentiary system, i.e. civilization society? We sort of are zoo animals. We're captive. We don't live in accordance with our nature do we? And drugs is a kind of way of checking out. My understanding of addiction is that it's an attempt to synthesize and uh, simulate the kind of spiritual connection that we would achieve if we lived in harmony with nature, if we were awakened once more. Things like gorgeous young people, like, you know, taking drugs and stuff, it would be glamorous to watch them do anything, wouldn't it? Eat yogurt, wash a car windscreen. I mean, they're so beautiful. it's cool it's cool <laughs> like it's cool to climb up a wall yeah um well look that's creativity isn't it the, the, the people that make this show are good at making tv shows and they've got great imaginations and they're expressing it so i suppose what that is is it's dealing with subjects that young people are interested in and necessarily are going to be part of their lives and the filmmakers are talented people that's really well done that thing with the climbing the walls i mean it's seen that kind of stuff before in charlie kaufman and michelle gondry type stuff and it's cool, magical realism, fantastic. 
Um, so I don't think it's like an irresponsible thing. In a way, whenever people look at a subsection of culture and criticize the values within it, I feel like it's important to remember that these cultures exist within the, the dominant culture. So it's just a reflection of the higher values. Say, for example, people say, oh, there's racism in sport. Well, there's obviously racism in culture. People say there's decadence, hedonism, and the promotion of these values in media. Well, these values are promoted elsewhere in society. People aren't going to die of drug addiction because of euphoria. People will die of drug addiction because big pharma companies promoted OxyContin irresponsibly, knowing that it was addictive. These lawsuits have already happened. It's a matter of public record that that did happen. Furthermore, we live in an unequal, unfair society that creates and generates poverty and, and mental illness. In fact, as Sebastian Junger, guest on my podcast Under the Skin, said if you were l trying to create a society that generated mental illness, addiction and despair, you couldn't do a lot better than this one. So I personally wouldn't be looking to condemn the makers of this show. Far from it. I'd say they're good television makers you know what i mean well that's a great cool show what i would say is this highlights that there's a great gaping abyss in our culture that drugs is feeling and you know tv is feeling and media is feeling it's been a, that way for a while and until people on mass awaken spiritually and develop practices that do the job that drugs and media i suppose you know do then this problem will be perpetuated and will continue what i mean by that is find a way of connecting to yourself that alleviates you from the tension of living in a world that can never hmm, right, except perhaps through nature and through love give you the elevation that um you know speaking from personal experience uh drugs can although of course my strong recommendation is that you do not do drugs one day at a time Obviously, it's responsible for us to say if you have a problem with drugs, alcohol, any substance abuse, you can find help from the links in my bio or you can email me at help at russellbrand.com where we have volunteers that will direct you towards appropriate things. Not experts, volunteers. They'll go, oh yeah, you should probably try this group or that group. We don't. I don't deal with experts. I'm, I've always been scared of expertise. You can probably tell. Hey, so, um, but my personal opinion... I'm obviously not the target demographic of that show, but from the little bit of that I've seen, it looks like it's bloody well made and sort of brilliant and dealing with things that are relevant to young people. And for me, this is likely an attempt to generate a little bit of a division around it, which will ultimately serve to promote the show. So the show's makers won't suffer from it. And do you know, in a sense, it continues to help us avoid addressing the real reason why people get addicted to drugs. Yes, you could say that a certain percentage of the population have a tendency towards addiction, but really it's a problem that's created by nihilistic cultures that are devoid of meaning other than directing you towards systems of consumption and commercialism. And young people who especially require meaning to navigate their way from childhood into the adult world will create systems of induction and initiation among themselves that will sort of synthesize the shamanic initiations that were part of our heritage for hundreds and thousands of years that have been lost as we become increasingly post-rational materialist. That's just what I think about Euphoria. Even the show's name, Euphoria, shows that we're looking for a kind of spiritual ecstasy, a connection to something bigger than ourselves. But that's just what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Pass this video around. Subscribe to this channel. Give it a like. Tell us what else you'd like to see me talk about and how you'd like to see me talk about pop cultural phenomena such as this and give you what I hope is a good critical piece of analysis and hopefully some helpful advice on addiction. If you are an addict, there is a way out of addiction. If you're concerned about someone else's drug use, you know, hit me up on that thing below and we'll see. Uh, you know, let me know in the comments below. We'll help as many people as we possibly can. But of course, we do have limits. By God, I've learned that. Stay free.